Hey, what is going on Stonebladers? Today we got another great matchup against a Jeskai control deck. I guess you could call this Miracles or miracle lists. Miracles, I know it's that card's gotten weaker from what I've seen, so a lot of Miracles decks aren't actually playing Miracles anymore, which is kind of funny. They might have had a solo one in it. Maybe I never saw it. Uh, spoiler alert, oops. Uh, but they do have Mentor, so it's very similar to like a Jeskai Control, uh, pretty much without Stoneblade, you know, Stoneforge package. So either way, we are going to be on the play. Uh, up in the dark in terms of I had no idea what this person was playing but either way unfortunately this is going to be a mulligan you know we play first we play island we can hold up pierce and if we don't draw land we are in trouble so this one is an easy send back as much as I hate doing it this is much better we have uh, island ponder and we have island ponder ponder which is great aside from that uh, fetching obviously we have to fetch island will be a little awkward if we don't get any planes but even if we don't we can use our second ponder to find stuff I'd say the misfit here is either going to be true name or back to basics uh, I'm going with back to basics here I like the double ponder to help find lands I've seen so many games where stoneblade loses simply because you're stuck on two or three lands on turn eight or nine and your your deck just needs lands to survive so I'm throwing back the back to basics no pun intended, or <laughs> just because it has back and it doesn't mean I'm throwing it back. Uh, I just feel like that might have been the uh, the oddball there. So Vista, Island, Tap, Ponder, and Discuss. Oh, perfect. <laughs> we have another back to basics. So here what I want to do is back to basics on the bottom. Uh, and then I want to do Tarn and Force of Will on top. Although I do already have a Force of Will, the only thing that's going to really get me good is if they do like Cabal Ritual Force of Will, uh, you know, which doesn't happen too often unless someone's playing like uh, uh, Nick Fit or one of those other decks. I think the Phoenix one plays it. Either way, I did want Double Force that would allow me to stop a turn one uh, Storm if I was playing against that. So it should be Basics, uh, Tarn, Will. Yes. Okay, cool. And if I didn't have a Force of Will, I'd probably still put that in my hand. Okay. Let's see. So we had just the back to basics. Uh, I believe I fetched here. Did I fetch? Yes. Uh, I didn't want that back to basics before. And Flooded Strand doing nothing. You know, obviously I know now that it's going to be uh, like Miracles or Control or whatever. Uh, these are all great. Let's see here. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, Ponder, Vista, and Brainstorm. The thing is, if I keep Brainstorm in my hand, I can use it uh, just in case it was something else. So I think having Brainstorm is the best here. Uh, and then I want land next turn. So I think it's going to be Ponder, Vista in the middle, or Brainstorm. I might have done it differently. Let's see. Is it Ponder, Vista? Okay, perfect. I actually don't remember exactly how I played this out. So I get to be like, did I play it? how I actually want to play it when I'm commentating on it. So this is cool. <laughs> so many times in the past, I remember, this is the part where I play Brainstorm and then I like ponder instead. I'm like, oops. <laughs> it's funny going back and watching games. I believe here it was just a uh, land go. Probably have a good idea of what they're on. I mean, a lot of decks, okay, basic, like they could be show and tell right now. A very slow show and tell, no cantrips, you know, it's a possibility. We have Ponder here. Uh, I don't want to brainstorm because I'm not sure exactly what I might need or want. Uh, if I was putting them on some type of miracles with Mentor, like this could be very handy. So I pondered here. We don't know what the other cards works. We uh, drew through all of them. Uh, once again, this is actually pretty good. This is turn four, so I want to play a land here. So it's going to be Cauldra, uh, Ponder, and Valk. Next turn, I can draw a Ponder, uh, Shuffle, and then use Ponder. Probably getting a Planes with that. Okay. They have... <laughs> Cast a magic card. This is good. They're on the board, or at least in the graveyard, okay? This is usually what it comes down to control. I guess people call it like the blinking match, like whoever blinks first loses. Uh, my hand is pretty bad against a quote-unquote blinking match. This is where Spell Pierce like really comes in handy, where you know if they want to force a will something, you can kind of get a two-for-one if you uh, pierce their force of will, or it's such an easy counter to say like Jace or something else. Uh, but either way, I think I want to planes here get a planes here just to get rid of that cauldron i don't want to look at that 
Please tell me I did. Good. Okay. I want to look at a fresh three, possibly four if I need to shuffle. And let's see. This is turn five. Um, I don't think they disconnected. <laughs> We're commentating. Come on, Magic. They didn't disconnect. So anyway, uh, I have a brainstorm. Dress down is good in case like a Snapcaster, but here I'm actually looking for land. So I believe this is going back anyway and shuffling. That's perfect. I'm looking for land. Next turn, if I don't hit a land, I can brainstorm. Sure. I can brainstorm here end of step, but I don't think I'm gonna be planning on playing anything, so I don't mind taking a look at that extra card. Oh, Teferi, okay. So the options here are pretty much uh, true name, Teferi, or brainstorm, but they do have five mana open, which is never good. Like that's a hard cast force of will, hard cast force of negation. I think I went with brainstorm here because I still want more land. Or did I do nothing? Okay, I did nothing. That works too. I think I want the brainstorm at the end of their turn. If not end of the turn, my next turn. Either or. Okay, they're on that. Okay, sounds good. So Jeskai control slash miracles slash mentor. That's like the best card to have when you're doing nothing. It's just so easy to get value out of it. Uh, let's see. So let's take a look at this. Once again, I probably could have waited until next turn to do that. Got a little ambitious. These are all solid cards. But what are we throwing back here? Hmm. Brainstorm is like, I want the land. So this might have been one of those things where like I'm not shuffling or it could have been, uh, let's see, like brainstorm, prismatic, not shuffle. Uh, it's tough. This is, these three are great. This is great. Obviously once it's in play, they can't really deal with it unless they play councils. I doubt it. Uh, but my guess is maybe not shuffling. Let's see. So brainstorm, maybe prismatic. Uh, what I do unselect something true name and true name so i assume i kept those or at least one okay cool now here's the part where do i play something i might have went with true name here because i know i have another one under it let's uh check it out seems so force of will so I know I do have another one there. The good thing, I think the re another reason why I went for it is because they only have four mana up. So it has to be a force of will and it can't be hard cast. That was the reason for that there. Like I could have played Teferi, but that also opens into uh, force of negation. Uh, do I want to counter back is the question. I may or may not have. The thing is, if I get this down, it's going to be very hard for them to do anything with Planeswalkers. Like if they get Teferi, they can only tick it up, like, unless it dies next turn. If they get a Jace, they only get one card out of it, and technically I'm attacking it so I don't lose out on any card advantage. So I believe I did force this. Uh, my guess would maybe be Brainstorm. Yep. Ouch. That's no bueno. Uh, did I force this for the... <laughs> if I force this, uh, let me think. Right now, like, would you force this right now? Clearly, they don't want this on board. I feel like if I do get this in play, this is going to be one of those times where it's going to be it's going to be very hard for them to deal with. Plus, if they had a, a dress down uh, swords, they probably would have done that right away. Uh, so I think I let this go. Apparently, I did. And coming up very soon, we get to see a. <laughs> I got to see. I got to see a very fun interaction that I have never seen before. Um, you'll see. Okay, I do have the plow for that. Unfortunately, had I, they probably had that in their hand for a while, my guess. Had I thought about this better, what I could have done is tapped uh, blue, blue this instead of just um, tapping the planes because now what I have to do is fetch and shuffle the true name to uh, to be able to plow here. No, thought about something else.
Here's the plow. I'm just gonna do that right away. And I decided to keep that. Just cause. I know that renders my thing useless there. Uh, sure. What do I draw? To fairy, pretty simple stuff. And I believe I, let's see, it's probably got rid of that yet. Attack to fairy. That was good because it obviously deals with um, any other creatures coming into play. So like they can't kill Teferi now unless it's with a uh, prismatic ending. It's funny, I'm doing more thinking than commentating on this one. Uh, and they do have the prismatic ending. Okay. Taking that up. All right, so unfortunately that's not helping. Uh, attack into fairy here. Don't. All right, so here's here's something funny. I've never actually had my true name dressed down before, so I forgot. I, I would always think that for some reason they play dress down. And it's like whatever, and then like it would still have protection, but I for completely forgot about the fact that when it enters the battlefield you choose a player so me i'm thinking like how are they blocking this and then i realized oh crap uh and because i never realized that that completely affected like how i would have played everything if if i had realized that's how it works which now i do it and it's this is just simply from not playing with these are like those little interactions you pick up with or when you haven't played in over a year like i completely would have force of willed that uh, the dress down they did with the Teferi in my hand because they wouldn't have been able to really stop this. That also would have unlocked the uh, the counter spells that I had further in my hand. So pretty much based upon how me not understanding how cards worked, even though obviously everything went as planned to my opponent, uh, that was a little a mess up there. But once again, that's rust. A lot of these cards, uh, there's a lot of interactions that I just haven't used. And I'm like, okay, that's how that works. I get that now. Even though it says it clearly on the card, you know, uh, it loses all abilities. It doesn't, like, allow it to re-come into play later. So now I know. So because of that, that was a pretty big mess up. If I'm really going all in on the true name, I, like, I want to force the dress down too to make sure it enters the battlefield. Uh, and if that was really my plan, like I said, I should have tapped this to keep planes open, and then that would have allowed me to plow the mentor, then I pretty much could have had two true names in play, and that's extremely hard for them to deal with, unless, of course, uh, Shark Typhoon. This is great because I'm getting to see more cards in their deck. I like that. Uh, at this point, there's not a whole lot that I can do. I can play that, though. Unfortunately, I just have cards that uh, don't allow me to do a whole lot. Okay, sure. You can see where this game is going. I'm always playing it out to see what cards they have in their deck because like, unlike you, you've probably watched a lot more, you know, of control and what decks are playing. I'm not all too familiar with it. I think I did this just to do it. Sure. And they got a couple more attacks, seeing if I can get any more information. And yes, sure. Actually, that I probably shouldn't have played. They might have not have known I was on Stoneblade, but that's fine. They can attack with their one, and that's good. Okay, so attack, make it official. Come on. Oh, <laughs> with ball. There we go. Okay, so let's move on over to the sideboarding. Like I said, that just came down to the whole dress down thing. Now that I'm commentating on it, if I'm really going to be force of willing their force of will... Uh, I probably should have went after the dress down too. That would have allowed True Name to be just a house against uh, Teferi against the further Jace. And I still could have had technically two of them, assuming they're not playing any miracles in their deck. So uh, easy fix either way. So now I know. Let's move on to the sideboarding and we'll talk more about that. All right. So here we go with the sideboarding. Let's take a look at the things we want. Force of negations like a maybe. Uh, hull breachers, uh, definitely yes. Dress down is like they got snapcasters. It can, I don't know, dress down a mentor to stop it from 
you know, getting more tokens. Not about that life. Uh, pyro, pyro, blast. Uh, if this was the bent version, they'd most likely have Carpet of Flowers, Sylvan Library, where I'd probably bring in two of those. <clears throat> they do have Shark Typhoon, but I'm not bringing that in for Shark Typhoon when I have these and other stuff. So these are the six that are coming in. Let's take a look at what's coming out. We have Back to Basics, Basics, Gite. There's an argument if you want to use that, you know, just to get some more value out of Stoneforge, which I certainly will be doing. Uh, but that's completely up to you. I love, uh, let's see, take this out. I love Counterspell. These games go on very long and just this counters anything and everything. It's beautiful. Uh, we can take out one swords here. Uh, and then this is kind of going to be, I guess you could say debatable. This is going to change based upon like almost every time I play someone, depending on what I see. And like I said, I haven't played <laughs> this game in a long time. So don't take anything here with a grain of salt. It's kind of just a recommendation on how I feel. So it could be a pierce or a swords. Uh, I think I stuck with three simply because uh, I don't want Mentor to just take over the game. I'd rather be ready for it. I can keep one in my hand uh, and use it when I need to. But I think in this situation, just looking at it now, probably a Pierce. So those would come out. These here would come in. Or I could always shave. I think I shaved one Force of Will. I think that's what it was. I actually value Pierce a lot in this. Like I said, it's just such a great way. Piercing a Force of Will is so it's such a great way to get value. Just kind of like when someone uh, plows the Stone Forge, another great way of getting value. Things like that I love about Stone Blade. And given the fact that this game goes on very long, or they usually go on very long, there's usually a lot of great spots to get value out of Spell Pierce. I believe I did, whether it was the next game or the game after. So it does go to three games. Either way, that's how we're looking when it comes to boarding for this matchup. You can tweak a, a few things based upon your liking. I do love keeping Force of Wills, at least three of them. I wouldn't trim down more. From what I've seen, when it comes to control, when I played this a lot, I remember when I first started playing, I had, was it Search for His Kanta? I was so excited about using that card. Then Narset came out. Before I put Narset in, I was like two and three to Miracles. Given the fact this was like the first time I had ever played against that deck, like I didn't know the ins and outs or the strategy, I threw in Narset, and then after that, it's like I never lost. Uh, I've won so many games against control, especially when it comes to Miracles. Uh, I feel it's just kind of waiting around, countering their haymakers, they're obviously their planeswalkers and their mentor if they have it, and of course protecting your own as well. I didn't really get to do that the first game. Like I said, that dress down was a, a very big misplay or blunder. Did I take out the dress down too? Uh, there is one there and there. Okay, so there are two now. I don't know if you noticed. I took out engineered explosives. I wasn't really using that, and then I it's kind of clunky. I mean, you can use it. It's up to you. And then of course I took out the third snapcaster for a dress down. The last card I'd probably edit, change around, is Pyroclasm. I mean, this is good against like Maverick, which you don't see a lot. Kind of good against Maverick. It's great against Death and Taxes. It's also Elves, but the fact of the matter is I feel for Death and Taxes and Elves, like I've used this card once and they still had eight cards in their hand. Like it's, they've gotten so much value out of their hands. They act so quickly. Even with Death and Taxes, a lot of their cards just value. There's a lot of value like Recruiters and Flicker Wisp and repeating the process where once you actually get to use this card, it's almost not all that great. So I'm pro I'd probably take this out for something else. I don't know what else I would want. Honestly, maybe a third Canonist. This card has been very good. It's just phenomenal in a lot of combo matchups either way uh, those are just some thoughts on the deck let's move to game number two all right so here we are game number two i'm feeling the pressure like i said i haven't lost to like a, a miracles control deck in a long i haven't played them in a long time but when i was playing i was i was running hot playing against them and unfortunately this looks like it's a mulligan i mean Cauldra's not even in my hand. This is like a, a hand of six cards, and I have Snap and Ending. What am I going to be ending anytime soon? A Snapcaster? Probably not. You know, it's just too slow, too many lands, nothing going on. Easy mulligan, unfortunately, once again. Uh, this is much better. Okay, we have two. This is actually phenomenal right here. Wow. Uh, let's take a look at this hand a little bit more. First and foremost, we have Island Ponder. We have the Plains for Stoneforge. We have Blue Card and Force of Will, even though we're going to be playing this. We don't really need to worry about anything based upon what I've seen on their deck until, like, you know, turn three is when Mentor can come on, although they're probably not playing it there because they're not going to get a whole lot of value out of it. I usually want to save at least four mana, a cantrip, so on and so forth. 
Then you got Teferi and Jace. So it's going to be a very slow game. So this is an easy throwback of Prismatic Ending and, of course, a keep. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, once again, I'm not sure why I did that. Maybe because I had the Pyroblast. But thinking about it now, it could be either way. Like I said, I haven't played this. Uh, this was a few days back. I forgot how it ended up going. So... This is a very easy throwback of Prismatic Ending. So once again, I throw back Force of Will. There I go once again. It, it's so funny how you can play Magic and be like, this is definitely the, the right thing to do or the better thing or the higher percentage. Uh, either way, now that I think about it, throwing back Force of Will is good because it's going to help with, uh, I guess you could say, card advantage or lack of. If I force pitch something and I'm on the mulligan on the play and they're on seven, I'm probably not doing so hot. So Pyroblast will probably fill that role. So now that I think of it, ooh, this is really good. So I think I made the right decision when it comes to that. I like all of these. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get all of them. I believe what I did here was going to be uh, Counterspell isn't going to be the one I get simply because I want to play Stoneforge next turn. So I think it's just going to be Counterspell on the bottom and then, you know, the other two on top. One's going in my hand, next turn I'm drawing. I don't think they're playing any discard for some odd reason. Let's say they just throw an Underground Sea in there. Probably the best way to sort this would be Counterspell, uh, Red Elemental Blast, and Tarn in my hand. That way, if they see a Red Blast, they could take it. I could draw another one. That's really thinking ahead. I don't think they'd do that, but... Um, that's how I did it anyway. That's the pond they're kind of thinking about discard. How, although if they did have discard, they'd probably take this unless they could handle it. Cool. So now we have two red blasts and I'm feeling a little bit better about throwing away that force of will with Stoneforge. Resolves. Let's get Cauldra. So... I have been obsessed with this card. I think this card, all right, this card has been very powerful. <clears throat> There's been a lot of talk about how it's like one of the best uh, removals ever. And I could probably see where people are slightly right with that. I don't know, actually, what do you compare it to? Like a trophy, decay? It is very powerful, but I think this card has just absolutely changed uh, Stoneblade for the better. This card makes nearly every match just so much better. A lot of matches that used to be so much more difficult are a little bit easier now or much easier because now we have a real clock that's extremely hard to deal with. Before it was like, all right, get Batter Skull here, turn three, we're bringing it in, and then turn four, now we're finally getting some attack of four damage. Or on turn three, we're getting True Name, and then, wow, we've got, what, seven turns or so? Maybe if they crack the fetch a little bit less, you know what I mean? So this is just so helpful against combo, against aggro, and just is so difficult to deal with. I'm getting this almost every time now. Except I haven't played against a lot of D and T, but uh, there are going to be times where I'll probably just get that anyway. Just like I used to get Batter Skull because it stonewalls a lot of their creatures, and I love that. Anyway, so this card has been phenomenal. It's been my favorite card, easiest out of all the the new treats. Okay, so they got an Unholy Heat. <clears throat> Good to know. So they can point that at a, a Jace or Teferi in the future if the Delirium is it Delirium? Yes. So if they get four or more, the DRC thing. Okay, so let's see what we get after they go, of course, because we're not doing anything here, okay? Play go. Oh, that is a beautiful draw. Tarn, and then use these two to play. Obviously, we're just going back uh, on a mulligan, on the play. Them, once again, pointing an unholy heat at Stoneforge is phenomenal. And at this point, I'm just going all in when it comes to protecting Stoneforge. I don't have a lot going on here. And this is going to be, you're going to see, I'm sure you've seen it before, but it's just the power of Stoneforge Mystic doing what it does best with Cauldra. Uh, absolutely not. They bring this in. They unholy heat it. Uh, given the nature of their hand, they don't have any planes. So if they had a Prismatic or a Plow, they can't use it. And... Given the fact that they know, obviously they know it's in their hand. My guess is that if they didn't have a plow or something like that, they might have force of willed it. So I am definitely going after this. Like I said, I'm protecting Stoneforge here. So let's let's do that. Let's get Valk. And here I want to Red Blast. Just because I have two of these in my deck. For some odd reason, if I play Pyroblast and 
as small of an opportunity as it is, every now and then play against someone in control. It's not the best thing to do, but surgical, like a card that, you know, they want a surgical. It is a possibility that, you know, there's like that 0.01 chance. So given that fact, I'm going to red elemental blast it. Right, right, right. Good. <laughs> Imagine if I just gave you that speech and then pyroblasted it. <laughs> How funny would that be? It's like, you don't want a pyroblast here because it's 0.1% chance they could surgical it. Anyway. Surgical was more popular when control decks had like accumulated knowledge, which was a little bit more reasonable to do. And then what would happen is one person would just play one accumulated knowledge. The other person would surgical it to find out that there were no other uh, left in the decks. They took out three of them. Ooh, solid. So pretty simple here. Using islands and planes to uh, bring this in. Uh, Cauldra. And we can, we can show off our spell pierce slash pyroblast this is really good because now they need a uh prismatic ending i mean they can swords it too if they want all about that stone forge value they tap this land very quickly once again, spell pierced. We're piercing this. Uh, it might sound pretty silly to explain, but I mean, sometimes you just might act quickly and say, oh, a red card, blast it. Obviously, you want to spell pierce here. If they force a will back, we would just power blast the Jace next turn. Or actually, we could just attack it. Um, they can't even bounce it because I can immediately replay it and attack with haste. So we're spell piercing here. See, I love spell pierce. Like doing things like this is so important. It's even more important. Like say I had another mana open and they force of willed it. And like I say, anytime you can spell pierce their uh, their force of will when they pitch the card, that's the advantage that Stoneblade really wants. And if I had a force of will here and a blue card, that would suck. You know, it's just more card loss. So uh, yeah, there's that. There's that spell pierce that no one seems to like except me and like two other people. <laughs> Anyway, it worked out well there. I'm not saying it always works out well. Uh, decent draw. Here I want to attack with Cauldra because next turn I'm putting in Batter Skull. Like I said, this is a serious clock. And the fact that I had two Stone Forge and they gave up, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just insane. Like, this is going to attack anything that they do. If, if they bounce it in my hand, I, I can just replay it. Well, if they bounce this, say like they played a Teferi... Uh, it would get countered. But let's just say I didn't have Pyroblast there. They play it to Fairy. It's like they can bounce this and then end of turn, I am bringing in Batter Skull. And then, you know, at my main on next turn, I'm bringing in this because it has haste. So it's just that it's pretty insane what Stoneforge can do now simply because of this card. Like I've talked about this card before a little uh, and I'm liking it more and more and more. It's just very powerful. It's hard to deal with. I think it's one of those cards that is powerful, but it's not like it needs to be banned. It's not even close to that. There are a lot of ways to deal with it, but I think it's one of those really quote unquote nicely designed magic cards simply because we get to use it. Death and Taxes gets to use it and so on and so forth. But that's enough talk about that. Let's go to game number three. I'm pretty sure nothing is changing. Uh, you saw the sideboard, so I'm not going to talk about more of that stuff. Here's game number three. All right, so we're going to be finally on the draw. I believe we're on the, the play both games and we mulligan on both of those. So that was tough, but uh, like I, I doubled I should have doubled down on that dress down by or doubled down on the true name by forcing the dress down game one. But I learned the hard way that dress down just completely turns this into a three one, uh, not thinking that, you know, I was thinking for some reason that when they play dress down, it's just not going to have protection during the time that dress down is out. Some things you learn the hard way. Anyway, this is a keep. A little slower, but this is kind of what you want, uh, especially against a deck that's going to be taking its time to get going. Ponder, Brainstorm. There's a lot of ways to filter for cards. Like here, this does not... It doesn't do a whole lot. What am I going to do? Plow a Mentor, turn three. But this is really going to allow us to uh, do some crazy stuff. I like this. They mulligan the six. Okay. So, hey, now they know how it feels, right? Yeah. Ooh, not bad. We'll play that later. So Island Ponder. A lot of games I found I was mulliganing, which is never fun with this deck. I know you know my thoughts about mulliganing. Okay, anyway. Uh, perfect. <laughs> like I talked about in my last video, so Batter Skull is going to be in the bottom. Spell Pierce in the middle. Force of Will in my hand. They're probably not playing anything turn two. I don't know if they play Counterbalance, but it would be nice to at least have Force of Will in my hand should I want to make that decision. Okay. 
or who knows maybe there's gonna be like monkey you know uh, dash monkey you never know if they dash monkey they would get my spell pierce too by the way so boo <laughs> Uh, so what do I want to play here? Let's see, Prismatic or Scalding? Uh, I'd say, let's see, Prismatic? It's tough to say, because like if I want to plow something next turn, uh, I'd rather get Planes there, and then this can get Valk. So I think I'd go with Priz. No, okay. I guess I could always get a Tundra that way. I, excuse me, uh, yes, a Tundra that way, and this can get Red. I can do it that way. Okay, so either way works. Now, I think I actually shuffled here. I wanted to get the, the max value out of my Brainstorm, because we knew a brain, <laughs> Brainstorm, because we knew a Batter Skull is next. Uh, either I put a, a stop on my upkeep, which I probably should have if I didn't. It's just so annoying to have that there. But I imagine I at least shuffled before I... Uh, or I did that. Okay. Once again, <laughs> that's one of those things. Do you want to look one card deeper uh, or not? Uh, I guess that was what I chose to do. This is really good. Okay, so I guess I'm glad I did it that way. Uh, here, obviously, is Batter Skull, and then it's going to... I'm just going to put a land on top and keep it that way. You want your lands against Control Heck. You want lands against every deck. Uh, I guess I hit a Stoneforge. Didn't matter. Uh, so I believe Prismatic Vista, because I want to get my planes, and then everything after that is just going to be, you know, this could be Tundra, Valk, Valk, Tundra. So let's see if I did Prismatic. So crack that for planes. Perfect. Once again, this is going to be... Oh, let me get the planes first. This is going to be the uh, the dominant fetch here. This represents Tundra. This represents Valk. So it represents Swords. It represents Spell Pierce. It represents Red Blast. So uh, I'm keeping that open. This does too, but this is just... Is overall better for me to keep there. This is good. They don't have anything here. We're getting Cauldra. Oh, okay. That's interesting. They did it right away. So normally when you when an opponent's playing against you and they do that right away, it's usually not the best decision because now I know it's dead, it's dying. How does that affect my decision making? Uh, usually you want to wait for it, but either if they did it this early, maybe it's to try and get me to get a different uh, equipment. So it's, it's weird that they did that. And because of that, I think I went with Batter Skull. Just because it's, it's much lower to the ground. Uh, let's see if I did. I think it, this is a tough choice here because obviously I'm probably going to need another Stoneforge to get Cauldra into play. And I'm not too far away from a Batter Skull. I believe I went with Batter Skull because they did that so early. Let me move this. I did. Okay. So because of them doing that, that got me Batter Skull. So either that was just too quick on their side or they wanted to do that to to allow me to get batter skulls. So it's tough to say. Like usually what I'm getting at is usually killing Stoneforge Mystic early is a bad play unless you're doing that to try and force the opponent to get something else. And if they try to, it succeeded. Cause I can almost hard cast that. Sure. A lot of explaining going on while trying to like <laughs> see what else is going on in the game. Okay, cool. So what am I looking for? Land, land's not bad. Either I played Tundra or I, I think I played Tundra here. I already have a, uh, yeah, that's fine. And we have the Z true name. Red Blast. Uh, not fighting over that. That's fine. I think the only bad thing here is that if I wanted to plow a mentor, I can't because Tundra is here. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so they must have a very reactive hand. Valk, okay. Um, well, I'm pretty much going to have to play this simply because if I don't play this, I can't... Well, I don't have a, a red blast in my hand, so I guess it doesn't matter at the time, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. So... My idea here was to play Jace and to have a... Uh, I wanted to put Valk into play. That's why I shuffled there. This is one of those times where it's like, what is in their hand? Like, they could have... The idea is that if they have Force of Negation, 
I can spell pierce that. Um, if they want a two for one here, I think I'm cool with that as well because I'll have a uh, backup. Uh, I wanted to force some action here because my hand, it it's not all that great, but this is probably, it could be a little rushed. Usually I'll wait a little bit more, but my hand was not a whole lot going on. Okay, so they had two blasts, that's fine. I'm saving this simply because it's just so easy to pierce like a Jace here. If they don't draw land, Teferi here as well. Oh, what do we have? Ha ha! Pierce. Any Force of Wills? Force of Will? Ha! Woohoo! That's, that's two spell pierces on Jace. Okay, so that was the reason why I didn't force. Technically, let's see. If I had force of willed and uh, pitch spell pierced uh, their blast, then uh, if they didn't have anything else, I would have a Jace. But then, let's see, would they have a Jace? I think I had played a land, so. But I also might have gotten a blue card. So it's tough to say. Either way, that's the way they wor it worked out. They're like, yeah, I should probably play a land now. The, this person plays spell pierce, <laughs> and uh, it's countered two of my Jaces. So I can uh, probably play in an island here. I can do nothing or because then I'll have a force of will or I can go for batter skull. You know, it's, it's tough to say. I went for batter skull. Okay. Cool. Can't red blast that. Just getting value out of, you know, them killing Stoneforge. And that's a big reason why, remember, I got this because I'm going to be in hard cast mode. So, and once I untap, I can actually bring it back to my hand, which is good. So how much mana do I have right now? I have three, four, five, six. I can play one more, seven. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I did. I'm just thinking about this out loud now. But it's probably good to play at least one land here because next turn I can always... Uh, you know, let's see. What am I trying to think of here? Three is to bring it back. I'm just trying to play around double removal if they have it. Here, let's... I, th I didn't play land. That's fine. I do have uh, bring it back to my hand twice. So that's... I guess that's fine. I'm thinking of like if I had Stoneforge out there. Uh, that's fine. See, once again... They killed Stoneforge. They're down a card. They plowed a germ. <laughs> They're down a card. Like, these are really good incremental values that we like to see. Okay, so now we can return this to our hand, which is good. Hmm. Okay. How much mana do we have here? So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Uh, I'm trying to think of how much it would, you know, 5 plus uh, 5, 10. Uh, I think I want to ponder here. Like, there's so many great cards that I can get. I think I want to. Ooh. Let's see. Pretty much a very easy Pyroblast here. So it'd be like Prismatic Vista, Pierce, Blast. This is a time where, yes, Pierce is going to be losing some value, but this is why we have our uh, fetch lands to help with that. We're certainly keeping that. And let's do one, two, three, four. And I, did I crack here? I probably could have cracked because it's good to have these two open. Okay. Ooh. Uh, yeah, let's pyroblast that. Or not. <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes there, Topic Tundra. Like, yeah, <laughs> I just said that with so much confidence and then did nothing, okay? <clears throat> I'm very curious as to why I didn't do that. Now, let me think about why I didn't. This is this is why I love doing commentary. It's like, especially when you play Magic, like I've seen the outcome of the game, I know it happens, and I'm like, let's Power Blast that, and then I do nothing. Like, wow, I tricked myself. Okay, so why wouldn't I want to Power Blast this? Let's talk about that. So, Given the fact, what am I scared of right now? They have one card in hand. They just forced... Oh, they hard cast it. Okay, so they might have a blue card in their hand. I mean, if they have a mentor, this is why it would have been best to uh, crack that. And then I'd have uh, swords up for mentor. But what am I afraid of? Jace I have covered. Teferi I have covered. Uh, a snapcaster. You know, what are they doing here? Ponder, sure. That's, that's nothing great. Um, I just felt that there's a lot of better things that I could do. 
once again, they spent three cards based upon Stoneforge Mystic. So I played Stoneforge Mystic. They gave it the unholy heat treatment, okay? Uh, I played a germ. They plowed the germ. Or I played um, Batter Skull, and they plowed the germ. And then I played Batter Skull again, and they forced it. So uh, Stoneforge, while it's hard to see, got a ton of value. Okay, so I guess we figured out the reasoning why that wasn't worth I mean... I wouldn't fault you for blasting that or not blasting that. I just feel like there's more important things uh, that I could be doing. Plus, so say they get like a Jacer to Fairy, they can bounce that, and then what happens? I got to replay it. You know, it doesn't have uh, what's the word? Um, it's summoning sick. Now, when you think about it, I have Force of Will and Pyroblast up and Swords to Plowshare. So, looking back at it, I, I agree with how I played it, not with how I commentated it. Let's pyroblast that. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so I still think it's a good idea that I didn't. It's like, what can they possibly play here that I am afraid of? Like mentor and to them cantripping, sure. Uh, still not a huge deal. I'm at 25. These are the control games that I like. <laughs> you play it one way and you talk about it the other. Uh, is this island worth playing? Nope. Okay. Uh, that can be brainstorm food. Let's see. I've had one brainstorm cast. Okay, so Cool now I really have mentor covered I would say I'm probably at the advantage here just cuz my hand is just really really powerful But once again, we don't know what they have Who's gonna blink first? Ooh, Snapomatic. What do we got? Are you sure I can't Snapcaster Jace? <laughs> uh, so we have Ponder, Brainstorm, Spell Pierce, Ponder. Uh, here I could just simply Snapcaster Ponder is is the possible line. Now this is where it gets a little, a little crazy. So if I do want to Snapcaster Ponder, which I'm going to be doing now, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So for Snapcaster Ponder, I need 3. And then I'm going to need, let's see, if I want to pyroblast something. What I didn't realize is that I wasn't expecting so much action going on. I think I did, let's see. Actually, it was Brainstorm. I'm sorry. So I didn't play a land there. And apparently that was going to be very important. Not super important, but pretty important. Because here I want a Snapcaster. Brainstorm. I chose Brainstorm because I wanted to use it at the end of their turn. Um, that's pretty much going to, you know, nullify doing that. So I did choose to pyroblast that. Sure. What do they got? Another one. Wow, they're really doubling down on that. So this is where I was talking about. If I had played that land, like I didn't know it was obviously going to come out to be that much. I guess that's one time where it bit me. If I had played that, I'd allow me to force of will this and then obviously cast brainstorm. So given that fact, I can either force of will this or let it go. This becomes just a vanilla 2-1 that I kind of wasted a card on. So I did end up uh, force of willing this. No fluster storm. And now I don't get to cast brainstorm. Uh, say la vie, as they say. And that just ended up being a one for one. That's fine. So after all of that, now we draw Jace. No, we don't. Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, do I want to play that land now? Yes, I do. <laughs> anyway, as you were. Uh, let's see. So they can Snapcaster... Uh, brainstorm, ponder. We let that go. Given the fact that I have so many uh, plows or whatever, um, I'm fine with that. I mean, it can attack for a turn or two. Pierce, there's that Pierce we talked about. <laughs> After what's it called? Uh, before when it comes to that land, I decided. Uh, I'm playing the other one. What do we got? Sure. They can get a few tokens off of this. Let's wait for them to do something. Let's plow. 
And would you look at this? <laughs> I know they're getting tokens out of it, but like I said, do you see how much mana they have open? Did you see the exchange last turn? It's like I can always find ways to use spell pierce. It's like seriously, especially in control matchups, especially in a lot of matchups. Like next time you're going through and playing magic, even if you're just watching someone else, look how often opponents tap out. Just just keep that in mind, or like when you can actually technically counter something. I know it's just a one for one, but the fact that I get to use value off of it is awesome. This late in the game. So they got they got two triggers here. No big deal. Let's see what else they got, sure. I'm at 25 life, so at this point, like I'm not like holy crap, it's over. This is perfect. <laughs> it might be over for someone else though. Come on. There we go. What do we got? Oh my goodness. Holy crap. <laughs> it's like, what do I want to put back? There is so much amazingness here. Wow. Hmm. I think all in all, it's just going to be Prismatic Ending and Swords because these two cards are just going to take over and have that backup. Or I could always just choose to play like True Name and then, you know, get a plow back or an ending. But I have this for their Planeswalkers, and uh, I just don't think I'm going to need it. So they kind of turned the corner slightly, but I was able to deal with it based upon the cards I had. Now I think it's my turn to do that based upon that godly brainstorm. Goodness. So, I mean, well, I did hit lands for a while. Eventually, I was going to hit some goodies. So I think it's Prismatic Ending and Plow. And Plow. Yes. So they're all tapped out. If they, if they actually have Force Blue card here... And it has to be Force of Will. Uh, and I Pyroblast that. You know, they're in trouble. Stone Forge. Let's get Cauldra here. Because we kind of have to. <laughs> and then Blue, Blue, White. You can also hard cast it if needed. But getting down True Name, uh, did I have enough? Three, four, five, six. I could have, but obviously getting down True Name is just such a big deal. Actually, well, what they can do is just simply, they can still do dress down, but actually, how would that work? If it already has protection from it, all creatures would lose their abilities. Let's see. Creatures lose all abilities, but when dress down is done, does it still return with protection uh, to this person, to the opponent? I'm curious if you know about that. I have never seen that interaction before. I know they can like, if... Obviously, they play Dress Down, then they can Swords it, I believe. But what happens when Dress Down goes away? That's something that I would like to know. Like I said, I haven't played too much with that card. What do they got? Mm, nope. <laughs> uh, nope. Nope. I mean, they can attack here if they like. Cool. No attacks. What do we got? Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, so bringing this in, probably planes, planes. That's what I would do if I had to go back. Perfect. Just this is, we have our uh, our planes here and this is much more threatening. We're not gonna be casting counterspell with that. Uh, here, I just we're just aggroing it. I mean, you know, can they really go off? Like, say they cast four instants or whatever next turn. So that's going to be 5, 10, 12. You know, they got, and they're going to be dead in, what, eight, two turns unless they block. So we're just aggro here. We are the beatdown. As I don't attack with true name. How funny would that be? Yeah, we're the beatdown here. And then, nope. Sorry. I can even uh, attach, what's it called? Um... Call draw to true name if I need to. Uh, so brainstorm. I don't want to counter this. They have one card in their hand. Obviously, they're gonna, you know, that's gonna change with what they have in their hand, what they're doing. I'd rather just counter some big payoff if they have, uh, you know, what could, they could hard cast. Okay, they gave up there. So anything. I mean, I don't think it really matters. They play to fairy. I'd probably counter it. You know, they can bounce. Uh, I think. Dress down would be the biggest thing that I would counter. Even if they just bounce Cauldra or whatever. Actually, if they brought this, yeah, if they brought this back to my hand, I could just bring it in. If they bounce this, I could just equip it. Uh, and I had Force of Will. It's pretty much if they play something and I'm like, this is going to affect whether I win or lose this game, 
I'm countering it. So they could, they were fine to go off there with the brainstorm and whatever else. But that was another one for the good guys. <laughs> we started uh, down a game, and I was like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? And then we ended up winning. So that's always fun. So I guess I'll call that Jess guy control, like miracle lists, miracles. So maybe they had uh, miracles in their, or what's it called? Terminus. I keep calling it miracles. I think I said that earlier. I was referring to Terminus, uh, but I probably sound like an idiot saying if they didn't play miracles. But anyway, uh, closing thoughts. That first game, like I said, just uh, from not playing with specific cards and seeing the interactions. I remember the first time I played a Vendillion Click, and I'm like, why didn't the other one die? And they're like, you didn't know? They changed the legendary rule. I'm like, crap. <laughs> so things like that happen all the time. Like It makes you look dumb in the moment, but it allows you to become a, a much better player over time. Uh, that's the fun thing about coming back when you shake off the rust. The mistakes that hurt the most are usually the ones that you never forget and pretty much hopefully don't do again. You know, as I go through saying, we're definitely pyroblasting this and then I don't. <laughs> so either way, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you got some entertainment and value out of this. But that's about it. Another one for the good guys and hopefully I'll talk to you soon.